the meet, uh, fellowship starts this morning.
heavenly. He's worthy of our praise. Just give him praise. 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 Come on, give him praise. He's the most high. Hallelujah, 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 praise the 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, praise team. God bless you. Amen. As we go into the message this morning, let us have a word of prayer. Everlasting God, we thank you for another opportunity to come to your house. <clears throat> thank you for our fellowship, Lord. Thank you because you are able to keep them that trust in you. Thank you for your favor and loving kindness upon us, Lord. As we go into your word this morning, let you bless the hearts of your people. And let them receive it to your glory. And Father, enlighten us, Lord, with it to fulfill your plans in our life. This we ask in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Uh, for those watching online or maybe watching later, Pastor Emmanuel here from Phoenix, Arizona, Pastor Emmanuel Oba, uh, GMI Church, uh, blessed be the name of the Lord. We are here to discuss on a very important topic. Uh, please don't let the, the suit distract you this morning. Uh, I won't tell you the story of this suit, but it has a story, so concentrate on the message. Leave the suit alone. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen? 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 Hi, Brother Max. Oh, bless you. You are laughing. Eh? <laughs> Glory be to God. Amen. It's a teaching message that will be a series, maybe one or two more series of it, as the Lord permits. Because the important part of this message will not be for today. The most important part of it will come later on. But I want you to pay attention, and the Lord will bless your heart. It's a topic that affects every one of us. It's a topic that we deal with a lot. Unfortunately, uh, we do not teach more of it, and uh, it creates problems when we don't know what to do in the face of uh, conflict and resolution, God's way. This is the topic of the message, conflicts and resolution, God's way. Amen? I don't know how many people here who can tell me they have not been in conflict. Some of these conflicts can so that you don't see it, but it is there in the family, in the business, in your place of work, in different areas, among friends, among brethren. So today will be a general topic in the sense of I'm going to bring certain categories of conflict. And then by as God gives us grace, uh, next time we may deal with the spiritual and practical ways to avoid and resolve conflicts. Many friendships have been torn apart because of conflict. A bunch of marriage has been torn apart because of conflict. Marriages been destroyed because of conflicts. And if you look back at times, some of this could be resolved if only you know how to approach it God's way. A wise man notices things about himself, about myself, and also notice things about others. You don't notice it to make accusation, to rile on them or to hate them, but you notice it to take care and to be able to understand what is behind these actions. Most conflicts are not resolved because we don't look at what is behind it. We just see the outward, the practical emotion that is being evolved. But if you're able to look at what is behind, I'm not talking of Satan behind, I'm talking of what is actually behind that outburst of emotion. Are you able to understand it? and deal with it, then conflict may be resolved. So uh, that's, second, that's the part we're going to go later on in 
the discussion of tongue conflict. Some marriages, friendship are hanging by the trade because of conflict. Even in the household of God. So let us pay attention, as I say. Let nothing distract you. Just let's listen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. <clears throat> Amen? Conflict is what Satan and his agents initiates. I say initiate, not fulfill. You, me, humankind, are the one that actually bring conflict to bear. But Satan and his agents are the one that initiate conflict. And if you are wise, when the conflict is being initiated in your mind, in your soul, or whatever le le realm that the enemy is coming bringing it across, if you can put a stop to it, then it will not evolve to fulfillment. So he initiates it, you feel it. You can blame him, or you can blame yourself, or the other person. Resolution is what the Holy Spirit does through me and you to resolve the issue. It could be in such a way that it is limited in nature. Or it can be a complete resolution. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So when conflict is evolving, you have the mandate from the Holy Spirit to stop it. But you have to stop it God's way. <clears throat> I want us to pray. You know, I had a, a revelation a few days ago about certain things, and it troubled me on this area. And if God allows me, I'll bring it out. If not, I will just pray on my own. Satan is doing his best to emerge the world into major conflict. And individual lives also. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Where conflict exists, peace is limited or non-existent. Don't pretend to yourself in your family. Once there are conflicts, you can try to cover it up or bury it or whatever, but once there is conflict, there is no total peace. It may be limited in nature, or it may be non-existent altogether. As we vote, we ask our question later on, should we bury conflict or resolve it? Should we sweep it under the carpet or it to be here? Should we confront it or be cowardly and back away from it? Should we look at it and say, this conflict needs to be dealt with? We look at God's way later on. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen? <clears throat> what the Holy Spirit does through me and you is to bring resolution in conflicts. But we have to allow the Holy Spirit to bring that solution. I want to tell us this morning that conflict did not just start yesterday. It has been in existence since the creation of the world. In fact, it was in existence even in the heavens. In Isaiah chapter 14, Verse 12, he starts to speak of Lucifer, the morning, son of the morning. God has to throw him out of the heavens because of conflict. He's a covering angel full of anointing and power and great position in the realm of the Almighty God. And because of his beauty and pride and what God has given made him to be, 
he started to think that he can supplant and be like the Almighty. And God booted him out of heaven. One comedian said, God, why do you have to kick him down to earth? If you can't deal with it over there, how do you think we can manage over here? And I say, well, that may be reasoning, but God did what he has to do. So Satan was booted out of heaven and down here because of conflict. He is still continuing with that mindset to set up conflict among brethren, among people, among marriages, among friends, among nations. In another area in Revelation chapter 12, verse 7, the same ancient dragon say, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, that ancient serpent. And the dragon and his angels fought back. Conflict in the heavenlies. It's not just in on earth. I want to lay that background. So that when we go deeper into this, you'll find out that conflict is an ancient foe to mankind. It's established for a purpose. And in each level, if you don't diffuse it and resolve it, it will be there. Blessed be the name of the Lord. There was this uh, uh, drama that uh, uh, I saw many years ago about the Montagues and the couplets, Romeo and Juliet. The part of thing that conflict does is to leave bitter roots. When I'm talking of bitter roots, I'm talking of roots that is so deep into the ground that it's hard to uproot it. And when those roots are not uprooted and destroyed, at times, it becomes a generational conflict. Our great-grandfather entered into that kind of conflict. It's passed down to the fathers. It passed down to the father, father. passed down to the children. And the children pass it to the next generation. The root is so bitter and deep, at times that even some generation don't even know how it started. But they still continue in that conflict. Romeo and Juliet was a, a product that was destroyed by bitter roots that was set in conflict way before they were born. The end of it is tragedy. And we pray that God will not allow it to be our portion in Jesus' name. Amen? <clears throat> there are different types of conflicts. We look at the global conflicts. We look at the conflict in the church. And then the area we are going to really look at not in detail this time, but later on, when God permits, is the interpersonal conflict. The level of between you and I. Friend and friend, brethren and brethren, wife and husband, business partners, teams. We get into that when God gives grace. But look at global conflict, the damages and destruction it has caused. World War I. I looked it up. 9.7 million people military died. And 10 million civilians. And you say, why is all, why, why does the devil do this? Because there is a harvest of souls for him that are not prepared to meet their maker. 70, 80, 90% of these 19.7 million that died in World War I are people that probably have not given their life to Christ. Young men and young women pulled from their home, assigned to go to war, giving a machete, a gun, or whatever they have to kill and be killed. That is conflict. World War II, 35 million, the population of California or more, times two. They say 35 to 60 million perished, both military and civilians, in conflicts. Satan and his angels and cohorts are rejoicing and harvesting souls that are not prepared to meet God. 
Some Christian family children are drafted, unbelievers are drafted, people across the world are drafted to go and fight in this war. While we are in one another's truth, and the worst part of it, the tragedy part of it is that these souls are lost forever to God. Ukraine and Russia, 280,000 or more going. We are still in that war. Go check the people that are being destroyed, younger generations that are not prepared to meet their God. I looked at the war in my own country when I was born, the Biafran War, Hundreds of thousands of soldiers, two to four million of the Biafran children, for which I would have been one of those, died of starvation in that war. I was born in that time. If you look at it, there is this particular disease that developed because of lack of salt. There was an embargo. They don't allow anything to come through. It's called Pashoko. Their stomach protrudes and they die. Many of us, like me, suffer from that. But for God's grace, I wouldn't have been doing what I did for God or for myself. That is what war conflict does on the level of the global levels. Satan uses it to reap harvest of souls that are not prepared to meet their maker. So when we... Let us not take it. Let us be praying against it. Let us be asking God to intervene because the target is souls. We are still talking about the global level. A few days ago I was reading and America predicts there is a super war coming in 2025 between the United States and China. How many of us read it in the news or saw it? Yes, sister, thank you. They are already ramping up. They are already calling the cause for war and to be, and that is the case that we are facing. Can somebody come and take this phone from me? I don't know. Please come and take it. Thank you. They are already calling for war. China started sending their war to balloons already. <laughs> Going around us taking pictures. We haven't even started. It was in the news. Maybe you saw it or not. Balloons was everywhere. They just shot one down a few days ago again. When they are predicting like that, it's already happening in their mind. Satan is already giving incentive why you should fight the war, why this war should go ahead. But look at the danger of it is that we are no more talking of World War I or World War II where they have, you have to pull up a gun that shoot maybe 4, 10, 20. We are now talking of nuclear armaments. America have about 5,000 or so of it. China have hundreds of it. Russia, thousands of it. Few of these can take out a whole portion of the United States. And there's no defense against it. This is what we are trying to avoid. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen? Amen? Now we have conflict within the church. The conflict within the church, if we go into different conflict we have seen from the time of the first church, the apostle, the Acts to now, will be days in talking about it. Conflicts. But let us just look at the, the church that was just a new minted church. The acts of apostle. The beginning of this movement. There was a conflict that would have put a stop to this word of God if not handled in wisdom immediately by the apostles. Recently filled with the Holy Spirit and baptism of fire, you would think that everything will go well. No! The enemy came with conflict, circumcision ideology, the mosaic law, 
they started fighting among themselves. Everybody should be circumcised. You have to be a Jew to be a Christian, and so on and so forth and so on, until God, by his grace, resolved it through the wisdom of God on the apostles. They have to go to a special meeting, if you read the history, to be able to resolve it. The whole intention of the enemy is to hinder the progress of the word of God. If you read that chapter at the end, I say, but the word of God prospered at the end of it. If not that conflict was resolved, then we wouldn't have half what we have today. Right on top of it, there was murmuring in the church again by the Grecian women, the widows who felt they were neglected from the food sharing, the social aspect of the church that ministers food to the widows and to the Hebrews. They came out and said, hey, what is going on here? You guys are taking care of the Hebrews better than the Christians. Are we not part of the same food and so on and so forth? There was murmuring. And God says, the apostles prayed, consulted with the Holy Spirit and said, you know what? You go and set up seven men of the Holy Spirit and wisdom so that they can tackle the issue while we give ourselves over to prayer and studying of the word of God. We are not going to come to share bread, but you find a way. Get seven people. Among those seven is Stephen. And then there is a, the, the Christian, we are not neglected. They make sure that at least one or two or three people in that seven are among the Christians. And that is how God quelled that conflict that will have divided the beginning of the ministry of Christ when he handed it to the apostles, to the, to the, to, to the children of God. And he says that after this, the word of God prospered. Bless the name of the Lord. <clears throat> Amen. Interpersonal conflict is conflict between person and person, individuals, members, friends, family. When I talk of family, I'm talking of at times between father and children, between children and mother, and so on and so forth. Between man and wife. This interface is so important to, that we should avoid it and as much as possible resolve it if it comes up. Because what does it do when there is conflict in the family? The two that are supposed to be together are now what? Divided. And what happens when you are divided? You are prayers. Intercession are no more what? Effective. And if you go outside God's way to resolve it, what most of the time you resolve it is you resolve it with the worry way. That means destruction. You go to Katie, your friend, and tell them when they don't have the wisdom of God. Or Google Kim Kardashian to give you the solution to problem that you has no idea how to handle. Everybody is now a professional counselor. When their own life is complete mess. Look up one day, Kim Kardashian is advising people on marriage. <laughs> Say wonderful. Uh, tell me what you are going to get out of that. Yeah? So there are people fit into this category, and I want us to watch into these categories of people, because we're not discuss, discussing solution today. We're going to bring out something that 